we're going to talk about government involvement in real estate financing. What is it that you know about real estate financing in the United States? Um, we have mortgages and we take this very much for granted in the United States that we can always buy a house. And the primary way we buy the house is through something called a mortgage because most people haven't saved enough money cash to be able to buy a house. In other countries, they they have to save up. Therefore, the houses are typically passed on from generation to generation. And very often, generations save money together to buy a house as a family because it's such a huge investment. So again, we take these mortgages very much uh, for granted. But we have some mortgage programs in the United States that are backed by the federal government and, and to help us be able to more have housing more affordable. So a mortgage that has no direct federal involvement, even though it may be made by federally chartered lenders, is, some call, is usually called a conventional loan. Loans that have direct federal involvement include those insured by the FDIC or FH, excuse me, by the FHA are guaranteed by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. So we have FHA and VA loans. Those are primarily what we'll talk about with government involvement in real estate financing. So the learning objectives are to explain the primary and secondary mortgage marketplaces, the roles of each party, and the impact on the parties through government influences. And we'll describe the difference between conventional, government, and private loan programs available for real estate financing. We're going to describe the various alternative and special purpose loan programs, which can meet borrower special needs. And then we'll explain the primary government regulations which govern real estate lending. Because it's real estate lending, because there's so much consumerism involved in it, and it's banking and things like that, there's a lot of government regulations and Introduction of the real estate financing market. What is it you need to understand about financing? There are government influences. There's something today called the Federal Reserve. We actually are getting a new leader of our Federal Reserve right now. Um, but we've the Federal Reserve spends a lot of time in, in, in trying very heavily involved in our marketplace to make sure that we don't have inflation. Um, they regulate the mortgages, the lending amount that the banks have to spend to lend money, to borrow money. Um, they do an awful lot of influence to control the money market. So the Federal Reserve System is huge. They control the primary mortgage market and also the secondary mortgage market. The Federal Reserve System regulates the flow of money and interest rates in the marketplace through its member banks and by controlling the rate charged for loans it makes to those banks, called the discount rate as well as the reserve requirements, the minimum level of funds that a bank must maintain. So these are always being looked at, but the Fed controls the purse strings here. And they set the minimums, and they also do this thing called the discount rate, which makes our loan rates start. The primary mortgage market. Lenders make money directly, make money by lending money to borrowers. We can get money through savings associations, commercial banks, insurance companies, credit unions, pension funds, and endowment funds. The primary mortgage market are where lenders come exactly to us, where we sit down and go through the application with them and we actually get our money from these primary mortgage markets. We have investment groups that loan money, mortgage banking companies, and mortgage brokers are involved in the primary. Again, placing that first initial loan is the primary mortgage market. The secondary mortgage market are loans are bought and sold only after they have been funded. Because we have government-sponsored enterprises, these GSEs, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Farmer Mac, and Ginnie Mae, all of our banks have paperwork that conforms to Fannie, Freddie, Farmer, and Ginnie. 
their, their forms are written in such a way that when you go from bank to bank, they're all done the same because these, these loans are all accumulated, brought together, and then they're sold on the secondary money mortgage market. And these government-sponsored enterprises help facilitate all that. There's loan programs. Conventional loans typically have what we call an 80% loan to value. Um, you can borrow more than an 80% loan to value, but if you do borrow more, you have to have something called a private mortgage insurance program, PMI. So when you're borrowing on a loan and you have a PMI payment, that when it's more than 80%, you're insuring the mortgage company that if something happens to you, they'll get their mortgage paid off. That's what the PMI insurance does. It does not pay you as the homeowner or the borrower. It's paying the mortgage company. Once you owe less than 80%, you can get that in insurance pulled off the loan. So you're no longer paying that fee. We have FHA insured loans. They use something called discount points. There are assumption rules that people they can be sold and assumed. And then there's also HUD home sales through the FHA insured loan program. VA loans, if you're a vet. In the armed forces, the VA loan is our guaranteed loans. You also can buy a home up to four hundred and something thousand dollars with your entitlement as a vet today without any down payment. The VA loans are going to certify a reasonable value, so you've got to go through a process where the VA is going to inspect your house, they're going to appraise it, and it has to meet the requirements. There's costs involved, again, points with a VA loan. The seller has to pay points to let a vet buy through the VA program. There are prepayment privileges, and then there is also assumption rules. We also have something called agricultural loan programs through the, through the Farm Service Agency, the FSA, and they have farm credit system. They realize farmers act a little differently when they buy properties, and they typically don't have monthly mortgages or monthly payments, they pay once or twice a year based on how their crops and their, their um, farming comes in, the farming agricultural money comes in. Other financing techniques, there's something called a package loan where we, we can put multiple mortgages together, blanket loans, wraparound loans, open-end loans, construction loans, sale and leaseback, buy-down, home equity loans. Most of these things you see, the package blanket wrap, other, other those kind of things, are more in commercial or investment properties. The home equity line, home equity loan, we have a lot of people that get home equity loans. They, they own their house long enough to have some equity in it, and they can borrow against what their house is worth to be able to use that money to pay credit cards off, send people to school, buy vehicles, buy a second home, whatever. We have home equity lines of credit, HELOC loans, very common. The other thing is, is you can actually buy down your loan. Um, you can go to the bank and, and pay points ahead of time to buy your loan down. People don't realize they can do that to help them control their loan costs. So we have financing legislation. We have something called the Truth in Lending Act, and we also have Regulation Z. These impact how loans are done. Um, that people are treated the same way, that they have all the right paperwork, that the loan is explained to them. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act, again, no matter who you are, it's a number on a piece of paper that you qualify for. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act says if you're rejected for a loan, that loan company has to tell you what agency rejected you so that you can go back to that agency and try to refute what they say is bad about your credit. It gives you an opportunity to clean it up. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act comes into play not only with home purchases, it comes into play today with getting a job. It also comes into play with buying insurance. Um, your credit score has something to do with how you're provided your rates for your auto and homeowners policies. They have the Community Reinvestment Act of 1977, CRA. This requires banks to put money into certain communities, um, poor areas of the community, that they focus money on Community Reinvestment Act and banks and insurance companies that are trying to push money into the inner city or the poor areas to try to help clean them up. And a certain percentage of their monies have to go into the CRA programs. Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, RESPA. This is something that tells you how you're treated when you apply for a loan, that they've got to be able to give you a loan estimate in certain many days, um, and how they're going to 
do computerized loan origination, automated underwriting and scoring is all part of this real estate settlements procedures.